Hey guys, welcome to another video here on the Aviation Pro channel. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to start up the Boeing 747-400 from Cold and Dark. I'm going to be using the iFly Boeing 747-400 version 2 for this. It's a new add-on available on the flight simulator market. And we're going to start up this Boeing 747 of KLM at St. Martin. So let's go ahead and get into the cockpit and start it up. So guys, welcome to the cockpit of the Boeing 747-400. As you can see, it's completely dark here. And uh, first of all, let's go out and go to the overhead panel. That's of course where we need to be uh, for all our uh, systems to run. And of course, first thing we want to do is get some power on the airplane. And we're going to be using the battery for this. Oops, that's the seat moving to the back. And we're going to turn on the battery switch this way and we're gonna select standby power to auto and as you can see this gives them some general electricity where some systems running and as you can see the FMC is turned on as well so let's take a look all you have to do now is go and check a few systems on the airplane um, the electrical engine control switches should be to uh, normal then of course we want to uh, let the cabin in the back get some electricity as well. So we're going to turn the utility switches on. We're going to turn on all the bus tie switches. So that all the electrical system is going to work properly. And uh, let's take a look. We're going to use the general uh, or generator control switches. We're going to turn them on. As you can see, they are still off as well. Uh, but uh, they're going to turn on as soon as the engines are started up. Then we move over to the hydraulic panel. We're gonna move the hydraulic switches to uh, off. We're gonna let them stay in the off position because we don't want to use any hydraulic power yet uh, because we want to use all the electrics we have to start up the airplane uh, systems. But we're gonna turn on the engine hydraulics so as soon as the engines are turned on uh, we have some hydraulic power from the engines. So now we basically have p power for the airplane, uh, but of course we don't want to discharge the battery. So in order to get some more power, we're going to ask for some ground support. We're going to take a look at ground power. It's unavailable. So park and brake is set. I forgot to do that. So we're going to ask for ground power and now ground power is connected to the airplane and uh, in most add-ons uh, including the PMD PMDG 747 you can ask for ground power and as you can see the external power switches 1 and 2 now show available so that means that electrical power from the ground is available and we're gonna select those and as you can see we're now not discharging the battery and the utility bus switches are on as well right now okay so we now have basic electrical power on the airplane and what we need to do now is align the IRS so that the aircraft knows its own position. And to do that we go to the um, FMC, we go to the position page. And we're going to go to the overhead panel, to the IRS panel as you can see here. And there are those three switches and we have to move them to nav and then enter the uh, GPS position or the last position into the scratch pad. Now, uh, the alignment time uh, realistically takes about 10 minutes. You can select in the iFly 747 if you want to have a realistic alignment time. And in this case, I have selected the realistic alignment time, but it doesn't matter because in the meantime, we're gonna take a look at the other systems. So we'll move those switches to nav, and they can stay in that position. Where we're gonna select the GPS position, and we're gonna set the IRS position by clicking this button. So what this does is that the IRS is now uh, going to align itself, all the three IRS systems. And if you can uh, take a look at the uh, navigation display on the iFly 747, you can see um, time to align. So for the left, center and right system, it takes seven minutes. So in the meantime, we're going to take a look at uh, the other systems and we're going to let the IRS align itself. Okay, so we'll just continue with the panel. Uh, you can leave all these lights off uh, because it's not really necessary right now because it's still daylight but the lights we do need to turn on is the nav lights because that um, ensures that the ground um, personnel 
knows that the aircraft is powered. We'll move over to the top. We're going to make sure that the uh, emergency lights are armed. And this is our normal. normal. Uh, these are all the engine start uh, instruments, which we're going to use later. And then we'll move over to the fuel panel. We'll just move forward a little bit. And what is important to do is to have all the crossfeed switches turned on. Alright, and you can re leave the rest of this because um, when we're going to start the APU, uh, the APU will automatically turn on two of the um, fuel pumps. So we can leave all the systems off right now. Okay, and then we'll move over to the next panel. Um, empty ice, where it's not required. Um, you would only use this if the temperature is below 10 degrees and there's visible moisture. But we are at St. Martin, it's very hot here, so we're not going to use any empty ice. And you normally turn this on after engine startup. What we do going to turn on is the window heat, of course. That is always a requirement. Okay. So if we go now to the right, we'll turn the yaw damper on, as always. And we'll leave these systems for now, because uh, we are not having any air yet. So uh, what we need to do now is, of course, start the APU to get some real um, air flow through the cabin. So starting the APU is a very simple process. As I've said, you don't need to turn on any fuel pumps at this stage. Just go to the APU panel and move it to the start position. And now uh, the APU is going to start and it takes a few minutes. And then the APU generators, just like the external power, will show available in a few moments. And then we're going to use um, these systems. Okay, so now the APU has started up. As you can see, it shows available. And just to show you that... Um, these two fuel pumps have been uh, automatically turned on so the APU is using fuel from these tanks um, what you have to keep in mind is that you have to turn on these fuel pumps later on yourself so even though they're turned on automatically by the APU you actually have to click them in order to turn them on but we're gonna leave that for later for now we're gonna go to the APU generator switches and turn them to on so as you can see, we're not using external power at this stage. We're using the uh, electrical uh, system from the APU. And the APU is now providing ele electricity to the aircraft. And what we can do now as well is go over to the uh, air conditioning panel. And get some air flow through the cabin. So let's take a look. Uh, you can leave this panel as it is. Passenger and flight deck temperature on auto. Uh, we're going to turn the trimmer on, recirculation uh, fans on, the cargo heat uh, you usually turn that on when you have something like animals in the cargo area. So uh, let's say just for fun we're carrying some animals, so we want to have cargo heat on as well. Equipment cooling to normal, uh, high flow is not necessary, the gasper and the humid on, so um, gasper are those. I believe those are those you know little air vents above your head when you are in the seat in the airplane. You can you know uh, turn those things so there's some air you get some air and humid. I guess it just makes the air humid, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, then we'll move over to the packs. We're gonna turn the isolation switches uh, on. We're gonna open them so that air flows through all the systems equally, and we're gonna just turn on all the bleed systems. Also the engine bleeds because you're going to need that for the startup. And then we can turn on some packs. At least one for now. And as you can see, and here, especially here, as we turn on the packs, we can hear some airflow through the cabin. So I guess one pack for now is fine. So what we have done now is basically start up up the uh, airplane's electrical systems we have some air running through the cabin and as you can see the IRS has been aligned now as well um, so at this stage we would normally program the FMC for example and make sure that uh, the whole flight plan is uh, entered but I'm not going to show that in this video in this video I'm going to purely show the startup procedure which is already quite complicated and not as easy as for example the 737 or the Embraer so uh, now we have all the electrical and air systems started up. Let's take a look at how to start the engines. Okay, so now it's time to start up the uh, engines on the airplane. 
And to do that, uh, let's first take a look at the hydraulic panel. We're gonna move these switches, the demand switches to auto, except for the number four. We're gonna move that to aux auxiliary. And what this does is basically it, this will, one will use electrical power to power the hydraulics, while the others will at some point use the engine hydraulic um, power as soon as the engines are started. Um, and then we'll move over to the fuel panel. And the fuel system on the 747 is a little bit tricky. It's not as easy as the other um, uh, systems. Um, let's first just turn all of those pumps on. And during the flight you kind of have to adjust the uh, way the fuel pumps are co configured. You normally during the flight you will uh, get some warnings when uh, s something is wrong with the configuration of the fuel system and then you can adjust it that way. Uh, but what is important for startup is the way we configure um, the cross feed. And we're go just going to take a look at the fuel panel or the fuel display. And the general rule for the crossfeed switches, as you can see here, these two crossfeed switches. If there is more fuel in tank 2 than tank 1, you turn on the crossfeed for between uh, tank 1 and tank 2. Okay? And if tank 3 has more fuel than tank 4, you also turn on this crossfeed valve. Okay? So in this case, tank 2 has more fuel than tank 1. So it's turned on, and tank 3 has more fuel than tank 4. So we're going to leave the crossfeed valves open in this case. If there would be less fuel in the, these two tanks than in these two tanks, so if there's less fuel in tank 2 than tank 3 compared to tank 1 and tank 4, we will turn off the crossfeed valves. So I really suggest reading the tutorial. I'll have to do that myself as well because I'm uh, pretty new to this aircraft. Um, to really understand the procedures of the fuel system and when to turn off and on the crossfeeds and certain uh, fuel pumps. But for now we'll just leave it all on and we're just gonna go ahead and go to the engine start procedure. So as always um, we have to turn on the beacon lights so the ground crew, uh, ground crew knows that you are about to start your engines. And we're just gonna start the engines at the gate right now. Um so let's take a look. We're going to use auto start. It's very easy to use auto start. And just make sure that uh, everything is set. Make sure that those generator um, control switches are turned on. And make sure that the engine bleeds are on as well. Otherwise the startup won't work. Okay. So what we're going to do is start number engine number 3 and 4 first. We're going to start them simultaneously. And what we're going to have to do is turn on the fuel switches here. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So, let's go through up to start a procedure. You leave one pack on, you don't have to turn this one off. So, in order to prov provide some passenger comfort, just turn one pack on, pack number one, but all the other packs off. So, that's the air we're going to use to start the engines. For the auto start procedure, turn the auto start switch on so that the airplane is really monitoring uh, itself and monitoring its systems to start up the engines. And what you have to do now is pull these two switches and then immediately also turn on the fuel control switches. So we're going to pull three and four and we're going to turn on the fuel control switches on three and four. We're going to go to the engine page. And as you can see, N2 is rising. Just zoom in a little. And engines number 3 and 4 are starting up nicely, simultaneously. Try to monitor all the systems, make sure they are all normal readings for the oil pressure and quantity and the N2 and the N1. And of course also make sure that the engines are set to idle the throttles to idle so that you're not moving away <laughs> too soon and as you can hear and as you can also see uh, the engine start switches are now cut off and as you can see for the um, 
the the number three and number four generator systems are now taking over so we're not using external power two and we're not using apu generator two now so same procedure for engine number one and two number three and four have started uh, perfectly i'm gonna start one and two and insert the fuel again we're gonna monitor the systems N2 is rising. And now N1 is rising as well. Of course, you can also use the non auto start procedure. Uh, you have to read the manual for that. And the basically, what it is is that you um, apply the fuel yourself at some point at uh, something like 14% N2. But for now, this is the most convenient way, and we can start the engines very quickly. And as you can hear, the starters are cut out, and engines number one and two are starting up perfectly. So let's take a look. We got a few warning here, as you can see. We can move the fourth hydraulic system back to auto. We can go over to the packs and select them to normal so that all the packs are running. And as you can see, uh, the fuel pump stabilizer left and right um, there's an issue with that apparently we don't need to turn them on so we're gonna turn them off again it's a bit of a tricky system I myself still need to find out <laughs> exactly how it works because I haven't flown the 747 400 that much uh, but at least now the aircraft is started up and what's always good to do is look through all the systems on the overhead panel okay so just move around a little the IRS's are aligned the electrical engine control switches are normal utility switches are on we can turn the APU off make sure that the generators have taken over uh, and which they have so we're gonna turn the APU off the hydraulic panel is all set all the switches are on and on auto emergency lights armed um, fuel pump system is all set window heats on and of course I think most importantly is that the air conditioning is set properly so we have all the packs running and all the engine bleeds are on and we can turn the APU bleeds off because the APU is turned off okay so as you can see it's a bit of a tricky procedure compared to more simple aircraft like the Boeing 737 or the Embraer uh, two aircraft which are often fly and which are very easy to start up but um, at least um, y if you follow all the procedures um, carefully and if you read the tutorial uh, a bit more to get a bit more in-depth information about the all the, the logics behind all the systems it's pretty straightforward in the end so guys, thanks for watching this video on how to start the Boeing 747-400 from cold and dark. I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Also make sure you check out my review of the new iFly Boeing 747-400 version 2. Uh, it's a very nice add-on for, uh, for a lot of flight simulators, FS2004, FSX and Purport 3D. So make sure you check out that review. For now, I'd like to thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you next time.